also called internal star, and the hot star also called white point is the external star, the hot star. And what you call hot star, if I go like here, to my muscle like that, this hot star, I use this one for heat, for punch, that's a hot star. The typical hot star you can see is a tiger claw. So from tiger claw they go all the whole muscle go this way, then go this way. So let's type it. But you say, okay, the tiger claw is good or bad. But a lot of people say, okay, this style is better than the other style. But as a matter of fact, you could say, which style is better, which style is worse. That depends on the personnel. If you come, you say, okay, you spent three years for a bad style, but you trained really good. The other guy, he trained three years in a good style, but he hasn't trained good. This guy still fails. So everything depends on you, and also depends how deep you can understand. Okay. That's why today I hope for this type of seminar, we'll give you an idea in China, how do we divide the style? And the, what is the hot style, soft style, and the hot soft style? In this case, you get a better idea. In the future, when you see some style, you say, oh yeah, I know this style. This good style to get in. If you have a big muscle, you say, okay, I will go to hot style, because you take advantage of your muscles. But a lot of people say, okay, you have hot style, then you don't have a chi gong, you don't have a chi inside. A lot of people say, that. that's not true. Because I can see a lot of internal style, traditional Baba, they laugh at the external style, say, oh, you don't have a chi gong, you don't have a chi inside. You don't have an internal, you're not nei gong, but that's not true. An external style, I love the style, say, oh, you look like a lady dancing, it's uh, not useful. But that's not true either. Okay. It's not because you don't understand Chinese, they say Chinese is stupid. Because the Chinese don't understand English, they say, oh, I'm more American stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you don't understand, it doesn't, it doesn't mean People are stupid, they are not. Okay. So you have to really get into it, then you understand. So if you really say, okay, you say, okay, I learned white train, the white train is the best. All other style is lousy, it's not good. But well, that's not true. Okay. So there's nobody has right today to say, okay, I criticize other styles, and my style is the best. If you learn, okay, so if I learn white train, I also learn tiger. Not only learning, I'm good qualify as a master, everybody agree, then I can say, okay, so this style is better than this style, otherwise I better keep my mouth shut, <laughs> because I don't know, how can I criticize? Okay. It's almost like I didn't know you, how can I send your point of view to, to judge the situation you can. So now you try to understand. <laughs> so in the Shaolin Temple, you go back to that fire about 526 AD, that's the year Samo came in, when you start teaching. Damo doesn't know Kung Fu. A lot of people say, wow, Damo must be very good in Kung Fu. From all the Chinese history, I try to trace back. Damo doesn't know any Kung Fu. He doesn't know any skill. What he knows, he knows meditation. He knows Qi Gong. But he doesn't know all martial technique at all. So that is from the history record I trace back. I'm trying to find there's no record at all. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, there's a funny thing. When I try to find all the history, I went to a Chinese Buddhist. Buddha school in Taipei. Taipei is a Buddhist school. Since you're high school, then you become a Buddhist, become a priest, okay? and then you go to the high school. Okay. I went to the high school to try to check the history because they have a big library. And later I found out I couldn't find any history about Shaolin there. When I talked to the principal there, I said, why I couldn't find any Shaolin temple history in this, this library? Because Shaolin considered a Buddhist temple. They said, no, we deny it. Then at that time I didn't understand. And more and more I keep talking to a lot of priests, then I start realizing. Because Shaolin Temple get involved in the politics, in Tang Dynasty. How many of you have seen the Shaolin Temple movie? That story is the real story. Or it's not a, like a novel story. You can even see you know, Emperor Tang, Tang Tai Dong, <coughs> Li Simin, his signature still in Shaolin Temple on the wall because Shaolin Temple did it for, for him. So that's a real story. But probably see, that the emperor did the best thing. Because after Shaolin priest, 13 priests helped the emperor to over the country. The emperor, Si Jiu Si Jiu means mean give the meat and give the wine to the priest. When the emperor give you wine and give you, give you meat, you have to eat, even if you, even you are a priest. Otherwise, you don't give the emperor faith. So at that the time, they start, you know, starting to poor Ji. They start break the rules. What they break the rules is from that time on, Shaolin priests, the priests, they start drinking wine, they start eating meat. 
So from that time on, all the Shaolin priests have been called Jolo He Sang. Jolo He Sang means white and meat priest. <laughs> That's because Li Simi he did these things. That's because that. So Shaolin Temple in the Buddhist society, they push him away. They don't cover inside their history. I couldn't find it all. Okay. And also Shaolin Temple, what they do, they teach all the martial arts. And the martial arts for to kill to defend. But Buddha is not supposed to kill. He's supposed to be killed. He's not supposed to kill. <laughs> That's because a lot of these kind of reasons. Okay, so Shaolin Temple has never been admitted as a Buddhist temple in China, in the Buddhist society, if you should understand that. Okay. So from 526 AD, then Dhammo he started learning uh, teaching Shaolin Temple priests about uh, Dhammo Yi Jin Jing. Dhammo Yi Jing, a lot of people say, oh, Dhammo Yi Jing must be very fancy, a lot of fancy technique inside, but it's not. <coughs> if you read the book about Qigong Lu, you find out inside they are not. There are 24 forms, as I know, because the Dhammo Yi Jing Jing has been come down for 1300 years already. Some people say, this is real, that is real, and Chinese men say, oh, that's real. Mm -hmm. But there are so many, many different kind of versions. But as a matter of fact, what I researched for all many different versions, all of them are real. Why I say all of them are real? The form might be different. All the principles are the same. If the principles are the same, then that's the real. Because you follow the principle, you can create. You don't just keep following. So for example, you don't permit. You know a minutes defense and attack technique. Then you become a master. Then you should create. Then once you create, nobody can say you are the, the preeminent technique you create is not permanent, still permanent, because you basically own the principle from your root, you create, create, you develop. So all the Nairobi at the moment, they follow the principle of a Dhammo Yi Jin Jin. They are right. Okay. So, you know, but originally, I, I, that's what I thought, the original power, they have only two sets. The first <coughs> half set is uh, the one, the first set is the 12 forms, the second set is 12 forms, and two, two more forms is uh, the ending forms. And also there's the still meditation. That's the first thing in my mind. Oh yeah, that should just be coming from my mind. But later I find from the other source. They claim it's different. But one way you can find out, it doesn't matter which step. They follow one principle for Dhamma Yi Jin When they try to cheat, they keep the cheat. A lot of people don't understand. Okay, like you can have a dumbbell. They keep it boring. Say, oh yeah, I'm practice Kung Fu, I pray Dhamma Yi Jin Ching. I said, that's true, you're getting that. But once you try to one form, then you get rid of it, you don't have it. But you are not. If you see Dhamma Yi Jin when they create it, what's the first form? The first form is this way. The second form, the three form, the third form, the fourth form, the fifth form. Why do they have to start from here? Because everything they train, for example, the first form they go here, build up the chi here. After 50 times, 50 times, keep repeating, doing that, at the same time, constantly. When they keep concentrate doing that, then the chi concentrate, and chi condense here. When the chi you up here, they, they don't relax. They say, one after the other form, don't stop. What's the next one? They go to this one. They start move the chi to here, then move the chi to the thumb, move chi to here, and then one section after the other section, until fall back. <coughs> so that means the chi they build up, they build up from small area, then start to build up into big area until the whole body build up. It's different from dumping, dumping, one, two, three, Okay, but they, how they build up? It's very simple. So this one we call external for white time in China, Qigong training for white time. So of course there's the one called internal, nei time. So white time training does exactly the typical external style in China now. It's not the only muscles. If in China, if any style, if you go to Taiwan, you can have, if any style, you use purely muscles for defense and the learning technique. That which uh, there's a Western style. No chi. Even Japanese now, the karate, hapido, they talk a lot of chi now. Because they realize, rely on muscle, that's the surface, the martial art and surface is not deep. So in China we have a proverb, you understand? The name yen quan bu lian gong, dao lao yi chang kong. How many Chinese do you have? That means when you practice kung fu, yen quan, it then not only sequence, Without learning Kung Fu. What is Kung Fu? Kung Fu is Qi Gong. If you didn't train, if you don't train your Qi Gong, when you get old, you have nothing. Because your muscle is going to degenerate 
the market is getting weakened and weakened. When the market is getting weakened and weakened, what you rely on pricing, you got nothing. So once you are young, like your age now, say so you are young, you should train it external because you still have muscle. When you have muscle, you should use it. But one thing, you cannot develop, overdevelop it. Okay, that's one of the best things in the external file. Okay, so in the external file, you, when you train, how they train, for example, like this one. They say, okay, the first thing they keep practice. When they practice, the mind concentrates. So when the mind concentrates here in this area, every practice, say, okay, now breathe down, then relax. And breathe down. Every time you go, the muscle tense. What happens when muscles get tense? The muscles get tense and relax, tense, relax. The muscle keeps developing, build up. Just like something. It keeps you build up. And once you quit, once you get old, the muscle is not as strong, then all those kind of muscles become fat. When they become fat, what happens? Then she won't circulate. The blood won't circulate. Then this one called Fan Gong, in China called external style Fan Gong. So external style is important. You have to prevent Fan Gong. You know, my third master's master, Han Jing Tang. My third master is Li Mao Qing, his master Han Jing Tang. Before I left the country, I still I saw him. He got a, the cane to walk this way. I'm not kidding. He was 75, 76 years old at that time. I was so shocked. I thought if for his training, he's supposed to walk very alive like normal people. But it's not. His right arm is That's why I talked to because that's what bothered me a lot. I talked to my third master. That's why I realized. That's because overdeveloped. When your muscle overdeveloped, when you get old, then all the muscle degenerate. You get the weakened. When you weaken because muscle overdeveloped, then become soft. You know the rubber band? Muscle just like rubber band. The rubber band you keep stretching. For a long time, then you relax. You lose the lose the strength. That's the problem, that's called sang But on the human mind, the human muscle is even worse because once you relax it, it general fat. That effect will steal all the chi channel, the blood channel. Okay. Then that's why that will bother Shaolin priest. Because that happened after 1300 years. It happened so many times. A lot of all the priests, they get fall. That's enough in the later. That's why Shaolin from external and switch to internal. So you understand, there's no, people say, okay, why Shaolin have external, not have internal? Shaolin do have internal. The beginning they are using external, but later they use internal. So the external, what they call external, for white diamond. When they use white diamond train, right, as I said, you use this one, the muscle keep develop. Every time you think, you concentrate, you think, your chi is there. If you train, I don't know, you understand it. You have ever experienced, okay, if there's a big car here, you try to push it. You use a lot of muscle, you push it, it doesn't move. Then you concentrate, relax, you push it. Oh, you don't need too much power, you move. Then you say, what happened? You use more muscle in the first time, you use less muscle in the second time. That's exactly what happened. The mind, the human mind is very important. When your mind concentrates, you can make all your fibers, muscle fibers, go up to higher efficiency. Like your brain, you think about like your brain now. Okay. Your brain, how much brain you use now? 32, 33%. So what the other 67% there is useless. Just like a big computer, you're not using them. Your whole life, you never use it, never touch it, then you die. Only, I think only about four or five months ago, uh, there's a report about Einstein brain, just the surgery, Einstein brain. They find Einstein's brain, he used only 41%. But he's a genius. Then the question is on the report, in the, the final report is that, I wonder if human being can use 50% of his brain, what is going to happen? So that human brain is very important, it's a concentration. That concentration can agitate the chi in the body and go to high efficiency. So like a, you know, one example, you can see a lot of people, before hypnosis, they get scared, they can do a lot of things. 
And what happens after they hypnotize? They can do a lot of amazing things. When they are weak, they can never make it. How you say what happens? It comes from concentration, the mind concentration. Once they hypnotize, your mind ignore all other things, will listen to what the one tell you to do, and your mind concentrate. So this kind of concentration can be trained. That's exactly what Qigong wants to do. Train your concentration, and you control yourself. So the same thing as the muscles. The same thing as the muscles, you can control. Because the muscles, according to the science report, you don't use more than 45%, 40%. But what you think if you concentrate on your muscles, then every fiber, Originally, you used for 40%, you can use for 45%, 50%. Then your power is stronger than our people. Then the more and more you concentrate now, we're talking about more. The more you train, the more you can concentrate. Then the fiber, every fiber can use to about 80%. All right, now you're getting older. Your muscles keep decaying, degenerating. But you use every muscle, you use 80%. Compared with the young kids, who say I win, you still win. Even you're older but you are still strong. So when you see some old men, they practice 30, 40 years of Tai Chi, they can actually have the young men, big guy, push him. The, guy, the old man soft, no muscles. The young man just never push him. Can not get out? Couldn't push him out of the ground. Why? Because his concentration is much higher. He can use his muscles more efficient than the young kid. But if young kids know how to concentrate, how to compare, then this old man will find his trouble. So the concentration is important. And I you think your whole body's reaction, you think about your body just like a chemistry industry, factory. Your mind is a decision. What your mind thinks affects all your body's reaction. For example, you sit there, then I have a machine gun here. I bet you you start sweating. You don't have to exercise. <laughs> When you see the scary movie, whatever, the second morning, my whole body soul. It's by thinking. Your thinking affects all your body's reaction, chemical reaction, or qi circulations. That's exactly the keys of a Chinese martial art. They use the mind to train, to strengthen the qi in local area. So this one called white dan. This is white dan. So that's when you practice, a lot of people can see tightly like, like this when they go this way, what happens? The mind concentrates here. The more and more they concentrate, the more they got power here. So when they match it, they find out you couldn't just move it. So strong. And that's external. That's called hard style. In the hard style, it does, all the chi comes from where? It's not from here. It's from muscles. Anywhere you think the chi will be there, generally. You can just keep pulling him like that for 100 times, what happens? This place get warm and hot. Let's prove what? Chi is there. The chi doesn't have to come from here. As long as you think it can come from local area, that's called white time, called external. What we call it external is outside of this area. But you say, okay, but this one can make you fail because you can have a, you know, energy dispersion, sang gong, when you get older. That's true. But Shaolin Shaolin priests, a lot of Shaolin priests live more than 150 years old. They don't have a problem. They say, how do they do that? Simple. You know, when you train it, you have muscles develop. When muscles are degenerated, muscles weaken, the inner channels are called cells. But if you know how to open those channels as well, you overcome it. You don't get trouble. You don't have a sign going forward. And how do you do it? Then you have to use the internal. All right. So that's why in Shaolin Priest they say, from external to internal, a lot of people misunderstand. They say, okay, from muscle to chi is not. They have a chi, but they tell the friends, from training of a chi, from external to training of chi, from tanking. And then you ask, why tanking is so important now? If anybody, after you learn 10 years, 20 years of martial arts, then you still don't know how to transfer, convert your chi from local to tanking then your martial arts, they, you never go higher. That's why in China, you can see a lot of people, they switch from external style to internal style. Now we say internal style, that means here, from here. So if any Tai Chi people, they say, okay, I learned Tai Chi, but he doesn't know how to meditate, how to generate Chi from Dantian, 
But I would say there's no internal stock. Let's do external stock. But if there's any sharding trees or any sharding style, if you reach the levels, you can use this place cheap to support this technique. I said he's internal style. So external and internal, that depends where your chi come from. But this part is very important. The reason this part called Dantian, try to think about the name. The name was Dantian means called field elect elector, the field. That's the place you can find elector. And then, <coughs> that's quite called field, but Dantian. You think about Chinese name, uh, meditation. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Medical name, what they call, for Qi Hai. Qi Hai means the ocean of Qi. What does mean the ocean of Qi? That means there's an ocean here. You can take as much as you can, you don't damage it. While you have excess Qi, you can put it back here, you still don't damage it. It's like a big reservoir, so much water there. It doesn't care, it can keep giving you Qi, it can even take in Qi, you don't get, get damaged. So that's like meditation, the first, you, the first thing you have to think when you meditate, use this part. What's the first principle? Yi so dan tian. What does it mean called yi so dan tian? The yi always here. So that means you want to get energy, you get it from here. When you have excess energy, you put it back here. The mind always here, never leave here. Then you never get danger. Then your energy unlimited, keep you up. So this part, you find out this part. So when you practice in and out, there's two big muscles here. This muscle go underneath the ribs and go up to your lung. <coughs> this muscle you can practice in and out, in and out. These two muscles, you use it since you were a small kid, you use it. When you are embryo in mother's stomach, okay, how do you grow? You say, okay, the mother's nutrition and oxygen give to you, that's right. But probably the mother couldn't push it to you. You take it by itself. Because nowadays they have x-ray. I saw the x-ray when I was in parents' class. They have embryo inside to take x-ray. How baby take in the oxygen and take in the nutrition. You find out the baby, whole body, they move, but this part, they keep pumping. Because it's very cold. So the more they pump, they keep pumping, they keep pumping, then the oxygen keep coming, and that's why they keep growing. Since the first week fertilized, they, they this part start moving, very tiny, start moving. That's why it keeps growing. So that's the energy source. So that's this part in China called baby spread, called Tai Chi. That's where the baby start grow, called Tai Chi. So that's why a lot of Buddhists or Taoists, when they meditate, they image this place, it's the baby. Keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. Because that's the energy. Okay, so that's exactly when you practice external for a while. Now you want to train, train internal. So internal, that's called Nei Dan. So we read the Qigong style, let's see Nei Dan. So Nei Dan is much harder. Because Nei Dan get involved in some vital cavities. Because you understand your body, this is the mind, this is the mind, governing the conception of your vessels. These two vessels, 24 hours, effective, dangerous. Another 12 channels depends on the time. So we use the cavity press to strike somebody you have to know the time. And you have to know the depth. I hear the normal technique. So usually that part in China always keeps secret from generation to generation because it can kill people very easy. But for these two battles, it's not. You can strike any time, can kill. So when you meditate, any time you meditate, you always get some cavity involved and dangerous. So you have to know what is ease of dancing. Okay. So from that practice, in Chinese people, they use, uh, okay, use qi to support the muscle. Okay, like this one called. Mm, I have a chi to support muscle. But now I say, okay, if I can this, okay, I have a chi here. I can generate chi here now, okay. I give you examples, okay. Now I already know how to train my knee that I have a chi here. Now, I punch like that. I have a chi here. Is that chi come from here or come from hands? Come from hands. Why? Because when you get your hands muscles, how can your chi circulate? When you tense your muscle, all the chi channels is still. So this muscle, the chi here, cannot be reached here. If the muscles, the chi here generally cannot reach the hand, then this chi is useless. You still use local chi. So let's do external spine. 
All right, then Chinese spirit will start realize, okay, now I want to use this chi to hands. I can't tense my muscles. That's exactly the exactly external style they are doing. All right, they still have a chi inside. So this is become a soft heart style. So soft heart style, relatively, the chi here start using now. And the soft heart style, like tremendous, and the fun zi, I doubt fun zi still also, not in chain. Fun zi. And the uh, permanence and white cream. Tiger is very typical external muscle, all muscles. Okay. All local cheese are called. So they don't worry about here. When we talk about white cream, then we start have two knots. <laughs> start have two knots to get this cheese out. So when white cream, what they do? When they strike, they all relax. When they relax, they have the cheese push out here. Before they reach the enemy, they start to tense up, get in like that. So the hard style goes this way. The soft hard style is nice. Okay, but soft hard style, what they do? They all relax. A lot of things they tense up. Why they have to tense up? If you don't tense up, how can you strike the enemy? How can you injure the enemy? And also, when you don't tense up, when you strike it, you strike 50 pounds out, you get 50 pounds back. You can hurt yourself. You should remember that. So that's why I start talking about jing. So a lot of people say, well, what is jing? <laughs> is the jing only have in internal style, or only have in soft part style, or only have in hard style? What's the question? What, what's the answer? All three of them, they all of them have jing. So the one you have a muscle with the chi support, they don't have hard jing. Called Yingjing in China, called Yingjing. Heart. Very strong with chi support. Anytime you have chi support the muscle to do something, that's why it's called Jing. A lot of people say, oh, Jing has to be jerk. That's not true. A lot of times, Jing doesn't even jerk. Jing can even just think to get a chi. Then that's Jing. You understand in Tai Chi, they have it called listening Jing, understanding Jing. You don't even see the form. Just purely by feeling. You feel the energy pulse. Then you can feel the jing already. When you go to Tai Chi, you go to very high levels. Your enemy doesn't have to show the forms. You just sense that your body bounce back. Because his energy, his chi can go back to strike your heart, bounce back. And you say, oh, I don't see the form, that's not jing. But that's a high level of jing, you just don't know. OK, so you try to think now. One end is purely muscle, simply muscle, no chi. The other end is what? Purely chi. No muscle. It's purely sensing, feeling. Okay. So in Tai Chi, there's one thing called Tapi Shi Ling Jing. Tapi Shi Ling Jing, what does it mean? Tapi, that's what it's called Tapi. Touch the skin, graze the skin. Shi Ling, that means have feeling like you stand on a creek. That's a creek. You're standing over there. That means when you touch an enemy, you feel the energy ray. For Tapi Shi Ling Jing. It's very, very hard Qing, very high level of Tai Chi Qing. But feeling. But you say, okay, the Qing has to have a jerk power for Qing. That's not true. Okay. A lot of people say, okay, my star have a Qing before I jerk. But a lot of stars say, oh no, you don't have it. A lot of stars say, okay, Tiger Claw have a Qing. All of them have it. But it depends how you use it. As long as you get Qing involved, you can say that's Qing. You use it to strike. So in China, about the Jing translation, I check all the dictionary. One thing I find in the dictionary is, okay, what does Jing mean in Chinese? Called Qi Li. What does it mean Qi Li? Muscle, all muscle, muscular. Use muscle to do something, that's called Qi, I call Li. When you have Qi to support Li, called Qi Li. So now that I put the new definition, I say, I put my definition in the next book. I say, okay, anything, any muscle application, you use the chi support, we can call it jing. It's not from my generation, my, my, from my idea, it's from the dictionary. But Chinese people, they call it chi, they call it jing. So from hot style, you have a chi muscle, then you have soft hot style. Then you start using like this one, you bounce out, and you bounce, and the last instant, you get tense up. You can see the muscles still there, your muscles still take, the, take a major part. 
Okay. So if I try to use an example, okay, white crane, what's the difference of white crane and the high crane? If I use a sand, rock, to hit something <coughs> with concentration, I said it's high But if you use the right hand, when I hit it, pounce back. That's tiger. That's soft and hard. It's not tense anymore. All right. Now, what is soft? The tai Chi, right? Tai Chi is extremely soft. So Tai Chi is like a whip. So that's why the old man, he doesn't have muscles. He still can defend you because his whole body is just like a whip. So Hui Qing is a harder. If you are young, you have muscles. You should train for a hard gene. You say, okay, I can get it, take advantage of my muscles. When you get all that older, then you switch from hard style to soft style. Then you know how to use the whip. If you reach the whip, then that means you are expert in soft style. <coughs> so in the Shaolin Temple, a lot of older priests, you say, okay, they are hard style. No, when they get old, they become soft style. That's where Xing Yi come from, but where Sparkle come from. So if anybody says, okay, I want to cut it, Chinese martial arts say, okay, here is soft style, here is hard style, here is soft hard style. You can cut it. It's all continuous. So any style you learn can be entered in any way, the region. And also I would tell you, none of the style, this is all bang, this is muscle, purely muscle, this is pure chi. None of the style say, okay, you focus only here. If any style focus on that small bang, then that's not the style. Tiger can cover from here to halfway. White can cover from here to here. And Tai Chi can cover here to here. But uh, people say Tai Chi doesn't have a hard gene. That's not true either. Tai Chi has hard gene. A lot of times Tai Chi has to use hard against hard. And Tai Chi has hard gene. Because Chen style, they, a lot of times they tense up instantly and relax. I say, well, that's still Tai Chi because you're covering the soft and hard range. Cover how they range there. But people say, oh, look like white coin, like a French man. I got that too. I could say, because that is not Tai Chi, it's still Tai Chi. Because Tai Chi cover range is near, closer to the chi. Tiger is closer to the muscles. Now you have to ask, okay, if I use the whip to whip someone, how can I get my power in? That's why for the heart, for the soft gene like the Tai Chi, that means you need jerky. So like a muscle, like a tiger, a lot of times they go this way, they don't jerk. But when they go Tai Chi, they jerk. <coughs> they jerk very, very fast, they jerk, get the power out. They can whip you, whip it. So you have to think every time you practice Tai Chi gene training, think about your body to take a, a whip. If there's a whip, you whip something, you go like that. Is that good or bad? Bad. When you whip something like that, the power stays on the surface. But when you whip it, pull back. The power penetrates. Okay. That's exactly when you practice Tai Chi, you couldn't go like that. That's tense. When you go Tai Chi, it bounces back. It strikes and bounces back. The power generates from here and controlled by the waist. But trick of the Tai Chi power is the whip, is the, the stomach. Your power generally here, directed by the waist. Your power doesn't direct the waist, the power can go anywhere. It's not in the right spot, you want to strike. So you can generate here and then go here. But you say, if the leg necessary to generate power, no. Even hands, I don't use the waist, I don't use my hand, I still get a power. So you understand, only the hand itself can be treated like the whole body. This root, like my leg. Elbow, just my leg waist. I need the gene. That's the place to express the gene. All right? So that's the first part you can get general power. The second way you can generate power from waist. I don't need to generate from the leg. But you can generate leg. Oh, that's good too. So a lot of time you come out, you don't, it's not necessary, okay, the gene has to be generated from the leg. As long as you know how to whip it, how to use it. So that's why in today's workshop, we like to, everybody get involved. 
cutting with the jing. Because it's not style, I believe you can do it easy. Probably so hard style, you start getting problems. <coughs> but Tai Chi probably get harder problems. And also, you understand Tai Chi. If people practice, a lot of people, they, when they perform, they use a, a spear or use a staff. They hit a rock, hit the, 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 the floor, they hit it. Then staff block. They will say, wow, that's good. Is it good? That's not good. That means your muscle. That means your muscle. When you hit the right, you hit it, bounce back. The power penetrating. Before the power bounce back, your rod will pull out. Your rod is good. It doesn't mean you break weapons. That means you are pretty good. To all the people is good. To explode your thumb in a real fight, you get trouble. Before power pull bounce back, you have to pull back. That is exactly Tai Chi. Because you understand Tai Chi, if you know how to use the whip to whip something, you can whip it 1,000 times, the whip still is new. You don't know how to use the whip, you can use the whip 10 times, the end of whips already tear off. I don't know if you have a experience. You can find just a small right hand or small stick to whip something, whip hard, with the tree. If you whip it right, the power penetrates you. Before the power bounces back, you already pull out. The power never get to the get back to the whip. That's the Tai Chi. So you understand the Tai Chi Jing. The Tai Chi Jing go like this way. When you reach the enemy, it's go very very fast. Power is power is fast. The speed is fast. So you go and then pull back really fast. If you don't catch the trick, you hurt yourself. Then you but you want to tense you up at the end, and you become not Tai Chi become white claim. It becomes so hostile. So what every time now you know this whole idea. Every time you learn this style or you see a style, <coughs> first you say okay if this style fit where then you get an idea. Okay. Any questions so far? Here I just bring the the dummy for you to see the case. But this We'll see if we have enough time. After the workshop, we still have enough time. We can talk about internal situations. Okay. Let's talk about chi because I don't know how many of you understand what chi. Then the guy has been operated. He's hard. He's awake. Okay. He's still awake. Why you see? See a lot of needles on the body. Because they try to prove you one thing. In the human body, you have blood circulation. You have chi secretion, energy secretion. That energy secretion does cause you pain. So if I have a needle in to stop it, stop that energy message pass to your brain, you don't feel pain. All right, that's how they operate, the heart operate. See, when you pinch it, how you feel pain? That's because when you pinch it, the energy here is isn't disturbed, your brain sense it. But if I stop it, for example, there's a circuit, if I stop it, the energy won't pass through here. You don't feel pain. Okay. That's how uh, about 240 AD in Hanan, in China. That's the first time they operate kidney for operation. Okay. So if you want to take a look at this picture, this picture, I think this picture was shot when Nixon was in mainland China at the time. And also, today I bring some T-shirts because every time I come. People ask me, do you have a school teacher? You like to have one? I'm working by a Harvard researcher who studies Chinese medicine. And he has a lot of uh, encounters in China and he reports it. So if you want to, I'd like to do it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put your hand right there. Okay. You think? If I push like that, that's what? That's muscle. You can see this muscle. You can see how it's tense up with it. All right, if I push it like that, that's a crank. It's still like it tends up the end. But if I push like that, I don't even use any tension. That's Tai Chi. So what are you trying to do? So in the Tai Chi pushing hands, so far I love it. How many of you learned Tai Chi pushing hands? 
So in Taiji Fujian, the first thing they try to learn okay, before we start workshop. <coughs> if in Taiji Fujian, you try to understand the first few things, you have to understand how to listen. Okay, remember how to listen. You have to listen, then you can understand. Like when I talk, you have to listen, then you understand. But in Taiji, listen is not ear listening. It's the skin listening. You touch, you listen. Then you understand. Listen, understand, then neutralize. Okay. If you don't want to neutralize, you have to yield. What does it mean yield? Walk away. Avoid the strike. Otherwise, you neutralize. Once you neutralize, you have to lead. Okay. Lead. After you lead, then you control. After you control, then you strike back. That's the thing. So like you push. Now you push, now I, I listen, I understand now it's pushing. Then I already listen, understand. Then I neutral. When I neutral like that, that's when you lose power already. Then I lead, then I control. So everything, if you don't understand those four things, listen, neutralize, I listen, understand, neutralize, then lead. You don't understand those four keys. You get trouble. But Tai Chi, there are 40 different kinds of genes. Today we're going to talk about listen, neutralize, uh, listen, understand, neutralize, and lead. And hopefully we can go to Chan. Coring. Coring, C O I L, coring. And the Tan Jing, and also the other one called Na Jing. Na is for control. If you know Na, you know control, you go to second level of Tai Chi. You know the first four listening, understanding, neutralize, and lead. You know the basic Tai Chi. Foreign. Once you go to control and and coroner, you go to second level. Then after that, you start learning how to borrow the gene. Okay. Borrow, and there are a lot of other genes. Okay. So when you train, those also the Tai Chi gene, when you train the gene, your enemies never go like that with you. Understand? Never, your enemy never go like that with you. That's very soft. When your enemies do it to you, once you neutralize the hand, you strike already. But you say, okay, why I strike the arms? That's why we practice. In a real fight, when you get a chance like that, do I strike his arms? I don't. The hand is gone. Because every time you go like that, that's mark. That's mark. That's a Tai Chi. So Tai Chi, they use the hand to stick with their hand. But when they strike, they go to the cavity. They are not going to deal with your hand. Only when they practice, they use the partner to practice. Try to sense each other. When they real fight, they real kill. Okay. So you have to understand that. Okay. So the first thing in, in my school we train, we train how to sense, how to listen. How to listen is one side, one side, only one hand first. Even easier, because later you want, I want you to try. So like that, you sense it, then if I can go like that, that means it's listen, it's not fast enough to neutralize. Because if I can go on the hand like that, that means my hands go there already. Okay. So when I go like that, before I go here, you already neutralize. Then I empty, go to empty. Then I know it neutralize my power. So like same thing, you push me. Okay. Again, push. Push. Yeah, you sense it. So he has to sense it. So when you start, you do slow like that. Then more and more, you ask your partner, increase the speed and jerk. When you sense it, you jerk. Yeah. Yeah, you sense it. So when you jerk, you find out the trick of neutralizing is the wrist. So when you understand how do you neutralize enemy power, the wrist. The wrist in young style, the poetry they say, the wrist is just like a cow. This place. You know, a cow has a hook. This place leads the whole situation. Like you push, see my hands. This neutralize. That's how you don't see my body move too much. Only this hand. I come in and just neutralize. But is that the right way? No. That's only to give you the, the beginning. What's the right way? The weight lead the power. So what I do when I sense it, the weight move first, then the hand calling it. See, that's why. Get in. All right, so that's why you 
The West need the same thing when I strike. The West still need to stay strong. So when you go, when you push hand with that jing, keep going. Then you try to push hand, go to higher level. Otherwise, it's still very slow motion. But in the fight, nobody is going to do <coughs> with you slow motion. Okay. So you have to understand how to neutralize. The first one, when you neutralize, first thing you have to learn is the wrist. The wrist you can neutralize to the right, to the left. To up. So when you try to up, of course you understand you expose. So when you are trying to up, then you move down automatically. Okay. So also you need to try to the bottom. When you need to try to the bottom, you couldn't go like that. He's still you. So when you need to try to push, if you try to push me here, I need to try to see my hand as you rotate. So if you don't know those tricks, then your neutralization, you couldn't get it effective. We are talking about right hand. Eventually, it's a two hands. Okay, it's a, when you get it, it's two hands. Yeah. Okay, it's a two hands. All right. So for you to use two hands, then that's different. Because two hands, you couldn't concentrate on one hand. All right. So that once you train how to neutralize for your wrist, then try to try to learn how to what? How to neutralize for four arms. So the four arms, the same thing. I go like that. One hand first. So he try to bounce, like I try to bounce it, he try to bounce. Yeah. yeah. When I sense it, I move. Yeah. See, when I move, when I sense it, I move like that, already neutralized. I lead. Okay. When I lead, I put him in the best situation. When I put him in the best situation, then I control. When I come go like that, it's control. We're going to talk about control later. Because today I like you to understand these six genes. I like you to train. So if next time I come back, I want to see you get a good, so we can talk another five or six genes. Because there are 40 different kinds of genes, it's called trans. All right? So for the same thing for the elbow. So you try to jerk here. So you try to sense it. You try to sense it, close your eyes. When you sense it, you move. When you sense it, a little bit, you move. You can try to like, you, you don't even, you don't even feel the movement. <coughs> then you sense it. You neutralize before his power even come out. That one called indictment. When you try until that stage, then your mind read the mind. You can feel because you understand. Before your chin come out, your e come out first. You don't try to know. Because your e, you lead the chi. Your e lead the chi to support the chin. Before chin reach you, your mind already reach his mind, reach his e. You already know. So before it didn't come out, you sense it. That's called enlightenment. If you can reach a level, then your your tai chi position is hard because you understand. Before your enemy know you, you already know him. Okay. That takes a long time to practice, keep practicing. So that's the part you practice for both sides. So I jerk him, he jerk me. And also of course you try to practice the same kind of jing training. Ask partner, go hand like that, people this way. You don't have to use too much power. You try to train yourself. And for this side, you try to neutralize if you can. It's pretty hard for this side. But this side, you try to. So the body, you try to think about this. Way. You can see, you don't use need too much power. You don't have to hurt each other. It's not showing off. So you don't need to show your enemy, show your power, show your power. If you see how much I can push you, it's not. It's purely for your training, for his training. Okay. So who is training? You can call it from here and direct it from your waist. I'm about that there. The same thing, if you got me, you try to got me, the same thing. You can do the same thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. What I try to do, I try to use my body to neutral. See, when you neutralize the enemy, it's not a hand only. It's a whole body. But the other part is not a hand, it's the body. So you see, he came in. My body just move, neutralize. All right. Okay, so you come in again. Then you find he lose. I just redirect his power. He find he lose, completely lose it. He had to hold in to save himself. Otherwise, he will bounce away. So you have to train it. It's by close range. So when you push in with someone, you understand how you push in. There are three levels. That's called far range. Too far. Trust me, I push him with him. Like that. That's not good. 
that's not good. Because that one, why that's not good? The first one, your arm is stiff. The second end, that's the middle range. The kick can go out anytime, easy. But let's call short range. You can see our people that push the least time, short range. Yeah. This short range is hard. It's hard. Because your enemy power can come in short distance, you have to sense it. You have to listen in a short time, and you have to understand and neutralize in a short time. That's hard. But for all the beginners, we like it. It's about this one. They call Aki. So when you use hands, you feel it. You have time to neutralize. To neutralize. So in this case, they can feel you know, the situation. You lock him or you're not locking him. So this one, short, this is a middle range. We like to train. So you have to train from neutralize here to here, arms, and here. And once you get it, what the last two? That's the hardest one. To bring you to the higher levels. I don't know how many of you push in in and how far you have gone. But when you go to control, control, in Tai Chi control, there are two ways of control. The first one is called touch control. Just purely touch, I control him. He say, okay, only touch, how can I control a person? And the other control is called China control. China control, I believe most of you already know about China control. But today we shall discuss a little bit China control. But the touch control is much harder. Touch control, control the joint. For example, if, if I control here, then he has a hard, hard time to get me by this hand because my joint is control his joint. But this one is still free, this one is still free. So he still can use elbow to stroke or he can use shoulder stroke. But when I control here, I limit it. So that's why the control is the first part. Then the second part, there's the second control. And then the third control. If I control here, this arm is completely useless. For this one is useless, that's my body to move in. So you have to think. So the control, how you train control? The same thing purely by feeling, by sensing. Okay. The first control of training is this one. If my hands are on top, let me I win. Alright, that's for practice. Because my hands here, the hands, that's all mine. That's all mine. So in the Tai Chi, when I Anytime I come here, this time I will take over, this time I go to the armpit, go to the sword, for attacking. So when I come here, that's me, I win, he lose. So he tries to reverse the situation for practice. So for reverse, he can go this side, come in. Or he can go the other side and come in. So in this case, I lose. So he practice, so he tries to come in. That's not easy. Okay, here, let me see how you get over it. Um, don't lose contact. He used a lot of muscles. <coughs> but what he try to give he try to get rid of muscle as much as he can. Okay. But when you control your enemy, you need one half a second. You don't need too long. Once I control like that, this hand already go. When I control like that, this hand already go. You don't need too long to control. Alright? So every time you got in this kind of situation, okay, relax. Yeah. If you don't relax, you see when I when I try to fight against him. I never tense my muscles. When you try to go on this side, you see my hands? I just follow them. See how my hands slide? So the palm is important. So you come in, try this, come in this side. I just follow this way. Then you lift cup. I just follow it. You see, I don't use, I don't use muscle. Anytime you use muscle, I just use instant to stop you. Now relax immediately. All right, then you say, okay, how can I get over? Let's call nudging how you convert it. That's a, that's different. 
So when you go, see the body. Okay, see the hands. Use his power against him. He's still got him. So he fired a lot of power. 
No muscle. <laughs> All right, no muscle. So the body, body is direct. Direct trick, it's not on the hands. So like that, it's not good. But I don't see your body move around with the, with the elbow. You are dead. I don't, I don't mean your person is dead, I mean your technique is dead. <laughs> try again, okay, try again. <laughs> So when you fight with someone like that, do you know how much he can get you, how much he can get him? It's start to get changed now. Okay. Right, so I use this hand. So if I can fight half an hour, you don't feel so. If you feel so only five minutes, you use your muscle. How many of you saw? <laughs> All right, use the same, you know, the same time. Try both hands. Try again. You got both hands. You got the corner. I love you go like that. That's that's good. But key is that you don't want to go like that. That's all exposed. Not only that, but when I come this side, see my body. See. When I move like that, I know I'm exposed. See, my body just turns, I still got in. And that uh, will help me to get in. Instead of going like that and resist. On this side, it kicks you, punch you already. But when you neutralize, the body is still behind, behind the, the body behind your hand. Okay? So when you go this side, the same thing, go this way. All right, so you have to get it right. Your elbow is not dropping. Alright. Yeah, if I get this, we get this, you block. Alright? Then go to two hands. So it can be either hands move. So both hands, you listen. You don't look. When that hand moves, you nod. You should have an automatic reaction. Always on the top. So make you feel enemy like you are the fly paper. 
the stop on the top, you couldn't pull back, you gotta get trouble. Always go there, you gotta know what to do. If you are in that situation, you are always attacked. You know, I wonder if you have a phrase to chase with the enemy, with a partner, with somebody. When you play chess, you got a right move. You always attack. You enjoy all the things. You always keep defense, keep defense until the enemy still die. That's all the trick. Okay, when you push in. Always put him there. He couldn't do anything, but he always can do something to him. All right. So do the same thing. Okay, for both hands. But remember, it's not your eyes. It's by feeling. The sense of the magic. Okay. See, sense of the magic. So uh, once you get cut, it's fine. Don't worry, you cannot take it over. You don't have to really resist. Oh, yeah. Okay. One more time. Then we go to single and double before we do following. Because otherwise, we're going to do it. Take you an example now, okay? I control him. He tried to get mad at me. Let's try to move. Very simple. So it's a lot of technique you can apply inside. You try to get over. <coughs> See how it locks? Very simple. And you can Because that's the hand from Sri Lanka. There's a China control here. Alright? You try to go the other hand. Try to go this side. See your hand? So it's not that, okay, no solution. You can always got solution. Even I control. Even I control. I still love him. Still love him. Alright. That's all the chin up. Because a lot of you, you know, at least you don't know how to use na. Na in Tai Chi. At least you know how to use chin up. Because I say chin up is part of the na. Okay. So you have to use both of them at the same time. The same thing for this hand. So you try to come. See your hand? Because in this case, you are in bad position already. Before his power go up, come and go this way. A lot of China technique you already learned. You just get to get <coughs> into the right application. The same thing for this hand. Yeah. Okay. It's very simple. It's very simple. All those things you have to discuss. Keep discussing with partner. Then you can use everything in nature. So you know, a lot of people ask me, how can China use in fighting? It proved it can. If somebody punch you like a hack and say, okay, let me control you. And let me let me grab my hands before I control you. You can. How do you use China when you fight from, from pushing hands, from touch? For example, like he punched me. Yeah, I still, that's why I get in touch. Then I can use China. Before that, I couldn't say, okay, now let me do it. He's gonna kick you three times before you get in. So you have to steal the control. So like you come in, see my hand. Yeah. That's why you, you lock. That's come from this for this training called control training, not training. That's a everything circle. When you get a circle, you got the right point. You don't get circle, it's this way. That's not good. In Thai, you go this way for a bosom struggle. They call double weighting. Double weighting is a mutual in trying. You struggle each other. That's not good. Whatever in Tai Chi, I struggle him, he struck me like that. Whatever. The first one kick win. <laughs> 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 so it's not. Okay. Make your body alive. Alright. So you understand. So when you push, go like that. The same thing. Yeah, the same thing. Let's still cut chin up control. Alright? But now the control is not as simple now. Okay, we try to what we try to do now this time, we try to with you as much as I can. And then you can do like this. Okay. For next time I see. Because some of you is gonna go back, keep research. Some of you don't. No, I know that. Control is not only here. That's the second control. Remember I said one, two, three. That's common place for control. If I control here, this one still can stroke me. Shoulder still can stroke me. If I go here, he can. He can strike me. He can stroke me easy there. Still can, but it's not as easy now. Especially every time I control here, that's a cavity. See the hands? That's a cavity. 
the same as the KP. All right. So the same thing. If you like, you can go to this thing. All right. See the same thing lucky. If I get over, if I turn over, try to one one time, one more. Right. Yeah. The same thing. It's, see my. I just turn my hand. He's trying to come in, I just turn my hand, I see you laughing me. He's still in the back position. The same thing, he tried to get to my elbow. But right, that's another one, I like you. Try. Okay. Like you try, to control. The joy is here, all right? So next time, we get a chance to talk about next time. All right, but now, let's go back to about half an hour for single and double fishing hands, first, because I most of you don't know any fishing hands. And after that, we go to coral. Single pushing hand is very simple. Single pushing hand is the real fighting. You don't use single pushing hand too much. Because single pushing hand is just for you to purely learn, use your waist to lead the hand. You lead, all right? Before your enemy's power come out, slightly come out, you use your forearms to neutralize one down palm. They call neutralize, called hua. If you use no power at all to yield, they call zhou, they call yield, like you try to push in. I go like that, let's call zhou. So then what? Then lead. All right, so that's very simple. See the waist, the waist. As I say, don't leave your hand like that. Because unless you are free hard, you can go hip and bounce out. Otherwise, don't. Learn to walk before you run. Okay, then remember the hand, I said the twist, the wrist, okay, the wrist, let the twist. Okay, when the wrist turn and neutralize, all right? So I get this purpose until you get it right. The body, waist, turn, 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 Don't push to the side, okay? Because you have an idea, because this only will right neutralize a lot of times you say, I don't want you to neutralize me, and you push that, push this time. Okay. That's not, that's because you only really attack. So when you push the chip, and then neutralize. Don't let, if you go like that, that's too, too close. All right, that's it. The body stop neutralize, body stop that's it. Okay. So watch it, it come in like that, the body stop lead. All right, try to get this one first. See so if you can get this. Then we go double pushing hand. If we go double pushing hand, double pushing hand has about four options to neutralize. Okay, then after that, we go to car. Okay, this one's the easiest one. Okay, so even you are good already, go over, let me see. Don't build up the big, big defense or short defense about middle range. Okay, you use the hand, you don't rotate. Remember, I said the first trick is this one. You know, this one you rotate, almost like this one. You lead his power, okay? So the hand, then the body, waist. The body, all right? Don't build, the power don't build until here, that's not good. Unless you're good, then you can get here. Otherwise, there, you sense it, you move, neutralize. Don't wait too long. Of course, when you neutralize here, he can sense it. He can sense it easier. So let me, before his power comes free out, he still can pull back, change his strategy. Okay. So that's why a lot of higher class Tai Chi people, they don't neutralize from here. They neutralize until your whole power is almost out. That means you are too late to pull back. Your E already out. Then he neutralizes. He always successful. But for you, your beginner, don't look high while you're still walking long. <laughs> so I'll say, that range, when you sense it, you start neutralize. Until you're getting get better and better, and you try to from expand, get comfortable. Okay. So remember, the trick is your wrist and your waist, all right? Then go to double. Double, there are four simple ways of double. So double, the original double is this hand control the elbow, uh, the wrist, this hand control the elbow, okay? So that's that what you got here, that's his all mine. Because that's all example. You try to go here, the leg, all right? You try to go here, there's a control. Okay, all those things, you start because you control the hand. So that's why the, the double push in. So when you train, double push in, go like that. When you push forward, that's quite a right neutralization. The same thing as a single. 
Okay, because when we come here, you go like that, because the elbow still striking. So that's why I use this hand, left hand relieve it. Okay, so and push it forward. All right, and the second one, for left neutralization, see, when you push, see my hands. All I got here, he's in bed position. Okay, you can lock up. What we go here, that hand is useless. That's all mine. This point, this face is all mine. <coughs> all right. So for this one called left neutralization. So you can keep switching from here and push again. And he can use the, this side, neutralization. No, strong take. All right, so we go here, use the left. So you can use the left again. No, so from Xiaomi, yeah, down three. Yeah, the same thing, okay. So when I push him, he can go, yeah. This one called left neutralization. He push me. So push me like that, I can use this side. Or I can use, again, that's perfect. I can use this time. All right. So this one called so far, you far, left neutralization and right neutralization. The next one is more. You know how many of you, when you mark the floor, the mark the, in the wall, what you call more, called smear. All right. So smear, like, you push, see my hands. Let's just see how I smear. I'm doing this circle smear. What he's doing, he's doing the other smear. So eventually, when you look at him, he's another technique. When you look at me, I'm one technique. So when you smear, one thing he didn't get it too good is this hand should keep in touch with me. Right. So you always this hand don't move here. Yeah. See this hand? He can do this hand. Yeah. Right. So this hand always keep me in touch. Never lose it. All right, then his move is very good for this side. So watch it. So when I move this side, this hand already stay here. So you see, you already neutralized me. Okay, so for this side, what I try to do, I try to go here, I go this part. Okay. For him, I need some white more, or some name more. Okay, from here, you try to go this side. The same thing, I try to go this way. The same thing. So you don't let the first side you smear, you always get the right. But right hand and right hand touch. Okay, so you touch. So he always put me in the best position. He's like that. This hand, the, the hand should go here. The wrist, don't, don't go like that. Anytime you can, that's not good. Okay, when you go like that. Unless there's a knock control over here. Okay. Otherwise, when you go like that, what happens? I go like that, the hand, my wrist already. The wrist away that way. So go here. So we go like that, then you push forward. You go like that, then you push forward. Yeah, then go here, then push forward. Okay, now he go here, again then push forward. Then move and push. See the body circle. Okay, so you have to practice until this side, the elbow don't move up. Because, because the move up, that's when you control it. So once you practice, the elbow don't move up, then you get it right. When I go here, keep the elbow, yeah, that's it. All right, then I couldn't control him, it's easy. Before I push up, this thing already pushed me away. Okay, then I don't, I, yeah. Then that means I couldn't control. All right, the same thing, my elbow drop, so I couldn't control it. I don't know how many you touch it. The last two probably you don't, but the first two you should. Okay, try. All right, a lot of you understand. One, one way in Tai Chi they say, cross is not good. That's the truth, cross is not good. For example, when I go like that, I quick. This hand push down, I quick. His hand got to come to block. So his hand come to block. Then let it cross. We cross, that's not good. See, I lock his hand, then he got trouble, we lock him. This is all mine. He's in bad position. So, Cross hand is not good, that's right for this case. But when you go to push hand, go like that. Is that okay? If you go like that, it's not okay. If you go like that, of course, they push you like that, you got trouble. But you are not. When you go like that, he is not okay. You are okay. But when you cross hand like that, he is not okay because the hands go here. He's all yours. 
Yeah, we go like that. He's a bad position. That's going to use. You have to get in. We move back. Shoulder strong. So that's okay. Okay. But remember, if you cross hand like that, that's not okay. When you cross hand like that, you just push forward, you get trouble. Lock your hand. Yeah. That's not good. All right. So remember, no? the weight is alive. You always get to direct the wrong angle. Will give your enemy the right position, advantage position instead of you. All right. So when you do these things, remember, when you neutralize, you start moving already. This hand already neutralized. Okay. So the same thing for this side. He can come in. Then you push forward. The same thing. You go this side. Okay. All right. Then the smear, everybody gets fallen for the smear. When you find the smear, go first, okay? One hand, so you can get this one. Right, see this hand? So you can get this right. If you get this right, you almost get it right. Keep circle. All right, then both hands now. That's why, when you, when you got circle like that, this hand try to go here. All right, then you try to neutralize. And try so again, then you neutralize. So when I go, when we go like that, then you push forward. Okay, that's why you neutralize. Got that? You push forward and you neutralize. See the right hand? Take your left hand away. Take the head, left hand only get toss up See, right hand still the same. Okay, now watch again. See, right hand still the same thing. I just try lock here. You just take away. I just lock here, take away, then push forward. We push forward and neutralize again and push in again. All right? So if we go like that, if your enemy is not good, he put the elbow up, uh, he is yours. So we go like that, he is not yours. You gotta watch out, he's coming. Okay? So we push in with someone, he's real life. So try to see why the right hand first. You can get the right hand first. You get this circle right. Okay, so when you go like that, then the body is in two. Yeah, and you're going back. See, let's. Well, you got it? Okay, then both. Right. All right? Of course, then you can go the other side. Both sides should train. Right. One more time. One more time. Yeah. It looks like when you're doing the smear that um, when you do both hands that there's a big circle and a little circle, kind of like one going one speed and the second one goes a different speed. It looks like there's oh, no, two there's, different circles. I think you can keep the same speed. Uh -huh. That depends strategy, so that's fine. Oh, okay. Because I don't think we can get any other more except this one called coiling. Coil of Han. Chan in China is this, like this is a branch. You have you ever seen a snake? Okay, that's exactly. So remember I said when you knock, when you control, you control the joint. So when you control the joint, you're not controlling this joint. You switch from here to here, here, coming back, and forward and backward. How do you switch from here to here? You say, you know, I want to disconnect and come here again, so it's not good. Because when you disconnect, you switch your leg. So you use a coring. Okay, call and all in, okay. So that's why I try to use this leg. Watch again, okay, so I can see. So you call and in, see, I go here now. So he neutralized that, he come here now. See, he left me. All right, so he neutralized. All right. The circle is not necessarily big, but if you go like that, that's not good. Why? Have you ever seen a snake go this way, moving? No, they always go this way. See, that's why go this way. Alright, you don't see go like that. When you go like that, that's not good. When you go like that, for firing. Alright, so you try to get two circles. In a future real application, maybe only one circle. But now try to get two circles. So, once you lock here, so you are in bed position. Remember we say, when you seal, you seal the elbow, right? You seal the ear, right? Now, when you see up here, what the one can do, that's exactly what you're doing. See my hand? Then I yield. And then up. Alright? When you 
you got here, okay, say pray around again, yeah. say, okay, now nah, I want to lock you. We get out and then we go again and go in again. All right, let's teach you only from here, from here. In the fight, we use the arm. Okay, everything is touching, like that. How you even control here? That's what we got here. In a bit position. Because, like for example, now we're pushing. See, I use it so fast in the fight. So when I use the fight, it might be like that. It might be simple like that. But it's not. When you go here, it's all luck, luck already. Because when we go here, it comes pretty good in the bit position. Right. Coring is important. The one that goes coring is more aggressive. Okay. It's not only defensive. All right. So fight partner, use this leg only, and this hand. Okay. If you're interested to get more from the morning, come back. So remember one time. So, so in neutral right, we're going to push you to neutral right. right. And you sit back, the hand, and you start circle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you go here, the lock. Elbow, elbow. So he's, he's yours. Because as I said, you don't need too long. You just need one little second. You can talk. This elbow is already gone. Go to this. That's a key with me. Okay. You don't need too much power. So go in. All right. So find part and go this one. See if you can get around. Because China is easy. 
even you learn different style from my style, you still can catch it up. But you want to learn something, I want to learn white coin. It's not going to be easy because you have to spend from fundamental foot for a couple of months before you get into it. But China, you always can get it. Okay, so that's about 15 minutes break, okay? okay. I'll make it now quickly. Uh, now is the time uh, we can take the payment uh, for. Today, it looks like the is only like the Chinese uh, chocolate. All kind of people, some internal, some external, some sheep, some non experience. Okay, try to cover all kinds of stuff, it's almost impossible. Okay, but I'll try to talk a little bit about Qigong. Qigong we mentioned a little bit. Okay. But the Qigong exercise in China is about 4,000 years of history. Okay, so what they do is uh, in the human body, you have a qi circulation in the body. On qi circulation, that's why I've always been denied by American doctor for since. China and the American has communicated for the last 100 years. They always deny it. Only one country in the Western world that agree and also they research heavily. Only one country. You know which country? Russia. Uh -huh. Russia. Uh -huh. Germany. Germany. Uh, Germany. 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 About 100 years ago, Germany already sent a scholar to China to learn acupuncture at that time. So Germans' acupuncture is much higher than this area, and also they believe qi is more deeper than this area. So the qi existing in China has been long, so long, but the American doctors have refused to believe it until it's only about 15 years ago, uh, no, about 12 years ago. When Nixon visited Chinese men, they used acupuncture to operate the heart. Then American doctors start saying, oh, what kind of technology it is? Then they start, start researching it. But only for the last 12 years, again, qi has been accepted by American doctors. So you can see a lot of American doctors that went to China to research the qi situation and try to find a way to enhance it, not by physical training, but by electric way or by other, other, other ways. It's a typical American way, lazy way. You don't have a you can just sit there and lie down, you can get cheese circulation <laughs> to get a health purpose. Well, of course, that's a scientific way. <laughs> but they are doing that because I believe they can make a good money like that. If they can make it, I believe they choose the okay. But there are other things you understand. You have to use the exercise and all the general energy in the body by yourself. So now, now most of the people believe now, in the human body, you have two major circul circulations. One is the blood circulation, the other one is the qi circulation. So qi is the, the energy circulation. Without the energy circulation, you'll be dead. With the energy circulation, the blood will circulate. All right. And then Chinese people try to find a way how can you enhance, make the qi circulate smoothly and strongly. Smoothly will maintain the health, but strongly you can use it for martial arts. Okay, <coughs> so let's try to find a way to do it. And then they say, why we have to do it? Because you have a qi circulation all the time already. Why you have to do it? The problem is not that easy. For human body, you are not healthy. Look like you are healthy. When you're getting old, you are not healthy. Why you are not healthy? Why are you getting old? Back. The reason because on your chi channel, in the body, you have eight vessels. That's chi channel. And now 12 major channels called meridian. So totally, you know, there are eight vessels and 12 meridians. There are 20 chi channels in the body. And those channels do not go together with the nervous system completely. It does not go to the artery system completely. But there's uh, 20 vessels or 20 chi channels independently. Okay, they go. But inside, 12 channels related to organs. So any one of the channels is stagnant, the qi doesn't circulate well, then you are corresponding to when you get ill, then you die. So you want to keep all the inner channels circulate smoothly. But problem is how do you keep it smoothly? The reason is because your, your channel, your inner channel is not like a smoothly, like a horse, when you try to water, water the garden, you know, kind of horse. It's not. It's someplace small, narrow, someplace big, someplace narrow, and someplace big again. That's the chi channel. So chi channel, when you are alive, the chi channel is alive. So chi channel can be sealed, can be open. When you get tense, you think about something, the chi channel is sealed automatically. When you get muscle pain like that, the chi channel will seal. The chi channel energy won't flow. Okay. Mm, this kid grow up. <laughs> okay, the chi, you know, the chi, the chi won't circulate as smoothly. And you say, how can I prove it? It's very simple. You pinch like that when your muscles relax, you feel pain, right? We get pains now, and you pinch it. You don't feel as much pain, uh, as much pain. Why? Because when you get muscle tense, the chi channel has been narrow. 
so the qi won't go through the smoothly. Then you don't sense it, okay? You don't sense the pain. So that's why when somebody hits you like that, you make a pain, you don't feel pain, or you go like that, you feel pain. So that's exactly the fundamental principle of golden bell cover. You know, golden, golden bell cover, okay, I will call iron shirt. But eventually, if somebody strikes you, you make it tense instantly to rebound the power, so the power will penetrate in to hurt the nerve system, so you don't feel pain. Then the chi won't circulate, it won't go to your brain. That's the whole idea for iron, iron shirt training. So, so in the body, the channel is some place small, some place big. But this small area is bad, called nut, or called shi. This area. So this area, when the chi get there, gets stagnant, won't get through. Just like a lot of water, if I get a small area there, the water won't get through. Then you cause the pressure over this time. Then you start feel muscle sore. And when you get older, especially this place, to give you more trouble. So when the energy won't circulate, then this kind of corresponds organ is going to make you sick because all it doesn't get the energy to, you know, to continue supply from the energy so the, the, the organ will be sick. So what happened for this one? So acupuncture, Chinese acupuncture, they put the needle there and stimulate. When you stimulate, you make it loose up and relax and circle again to adjust. It. So they can adjust and make it too positive or make it negative. Okay, so your body is the chi circulation, they try to keep it neutral. Neither too positive, neither too negative. The positive is sufficient, it's not good. The negative is not good either. The deficient is not good. So for the Qigong trainer, so what they try to train is okay, well since we have so many nuts in the body, those nuts, how can I open it up? So when I get old, I don't give trouble. Because she still can circle, it's still stuck there. Okay. So every time you get a bruise, eventually the Qi channel seal, that's what gets swollen. When we get swollen in my house, swollen some places, bruises, but a lot of places now we touch it soft. That's because she's stagnant there. We cause the water to accumulate there. So this place, the chi channel you want to open. So the Chinese people think about how can I open it? That's called qi gong. So qi gong have two ways to train it. One is externally, the other one is internally. Externally, you can, you know, for example, like a damo yi jin jin, that's externally. <coughs> okay. Or the other way, you can put your hand like that. When you put your hand like that for a while, what happens? This place gets sore and warm. When you get sore and warm, that means this place, the energy pump up. When the energy pump up, what happens? And this place is higher, energy here is higher, chi is higher. So once you drop your hand, because we go like we get tense here, all right, because this place is sore, so muscle is tense, so energy will stack there, stack in there, like the water has been accumulated here. Then once you relax, all the muscles relax, all the water start running, so it come in, so you can feel the energy. That's one way to build the energy in local area. Then after you relax, the energy will come back here and go into your organs to benefit. So there are six channels what your hands, and there are six channels what your leg. Three inside, called in, three outside, yang. The same thing, three inside, three outside. So if you just exercise hands, that means you get six organs, good. But the other six organs, you don't. But you only exercise leg, you get another six organs. So that's why people, in Chinese people, people they say they try to train qigong. The easiest one for an old man, the easiest one. If they get a cancer or they get some lung problem, the doctor asks them, string arm, just string arm. So watch TV and string it. And it's just, that's a very simple exercise. But that's called Qigong training already. Before you can watch TV, but you keep stringing, then you keep build up the energy over here, you build up energy here. Then you build up energy, you come back to furnish the organ. Then make energy circuit well, then cancer disappear. Because they prove it is very effective to cure a lot of cancer. Okay, because cancer, what's the cancer called? It's not by bacteria, it's not. It's your body cell against you. Why your body cell against you? Because your body cell is not growing, growing normally. Why it's not growing normally? Because you don't get enough chi or you didn't get enough blood. But usually, most of the time, it's, like it's chi, it's out of balance. But what they do, they take the kids circuit and kill the chi balance over again. They found out the cancer cure. Okay. I wonder if you have heard the story about a guy, the doctor tell him, so you got a cancer, you're gonna die. So he had two years to live. So what you want to do, just go ahead and do it. The guy said, okay, since I have two years to live, I don't care. Just go to fishing, go to climb mountain, do whatever he wants. Then he'll feel relaxed because he's saying he's gonna die. He doesn't have any kind of responsibility. 
And two years later, the doctor said, you don't have cancer anymore. So what happened? That's because he feels so happy, he keeps exercising. He's not really happy, but he exercise and keep moving, and keep doing a lot of things, activities. Then he finds a cheese circuit and cure. Then he's supposed to die? No. So a lot of times when you find a cancer or something, you have to change the style or the living style to cure the cancer. Like when somebody says, okay, you are heavy smoker, then suddenly you quit, you don't get cancer, you will get cancer. But if you don't smoke, suddenly you smoke a lot, you get cancer. So you smoke a lot, you want to quit, you quit greater, you don't get cancer. But you quit, suddenly you get cancer. Because others just couldn't adjust, turn 180 degrees to adjust, you can't. Okay, you have to do slowly, so body cell will fit it. The same thing with Qigong, so you got to train. So we train, like you swing on this child for about 500 times, and then 600 times gradually. Instead of first time, do all 5,000 times. And the second morning, what you find out, you have all the memory, the bones swung, ligaments swung. They say, oh, that's not good. Because you do it right away. And they start complaining that it's not good. But that's not right away. So what the Qigong try to do, they try to build the Qi, try to get circuit in the organs, uh, in the channels. So there are a few Qigong exercises, we try to go over a few forms and then you understand to lead you into the book. Okay. For internal, they want to take about two hours to talk about internal. So that's not easy. <coughs> Especially a lot of people here already listen to the internal seminar last time. Okay, when I came. So probably next time we talk about internal circulation again, next time again. Okay. But this time we're gonna skip it. But the external you can easily do it. What you try to do is try to get used to your mind and the get energy to the tongue. As I said, there are a few ways to train external. For example, you can hold like that and relax. Hold like that and relax. We hold like that and relax. Every time you hold it tense like that, you start pump energy here. But I say this kind of pump energy, if overtrained, is not good. Why? Because you train your muscles. When you train your muscle, your muscle can be overdeveloped. And when you get quick, the muscle becomes soft. Then the fat is going to get it. Okay, the chi channel is still, so that's not good. But another type of external training that we like to get involved, okay, that's the set we try to do now. It's not in the Qigong book. Okay. It's come from Tai Chi, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's what we try to do. What you try to do in Qigong training, you try to understand one of the tricks is use your E to lead your chi. Remember that. Use your mind. Lead, E, that's the mind. Use your mind to lead the chi. It's not to use your mind to push. Okay. You treat your chi like water. Your mind just lead it. You open the channel, then it opens, then it flow by itself. Instead of keep pushing it. Can you push the water? You can push the water, but you can lead the water easy. When you push the water, it gets flooded. When you lead the water, it flows smoothly. Took me three years to understand that. They become very vulnerable. So when you want to exercise, every time you move your hand like that, how do you lead your chi to your palm? By imagination. So every time you push, you keep imaging. There's a heavy object in front of you. But all muscles relax, none of muscles hands up. So you just think, I think you push it. I think you push it. Then you feel this part get warm. The chi starts warm. So this is the way of the Qigong training is the way I like most. You still go, relax, tense, relax. When you are young, that's okay. When you are getting old, and that's not good. But you can train it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't train it because Shaolin Temple has been training for 1,000 years, 1,300 years. They still train it. But probably you train it, you have to know, don't overdevelop it. Too skinny is not too good. But too overdeveloped, like those the monsters, you know, kind of muscle magazine, that's not good. <laughs> Alright, but you build some muscle, that's good. Because you really need some muscles. Like you are too skinny, they can train that. So no problem at all. Okay. I would say most of you are too skinny. <laughs> but don't over develop it. Don't over develop Okay. Alright now, let's stand up. Let's go a few forms and see if you can understand. This is banana or Huh? So it's coming? You're married, right? Okay. Alright, find big space. So 
you can remember, try to remember. If you don't remember, that's in Tai Chi books. Okay, now push that way. Push. Think about it, you have two walls against you. But never push your two arms straight. Never. Keep arms bent. But now relax again. When you push, remember all your muscles relax, not tense up. Only your ease is pushing. Your mind is pushing. In. And out. All this exercise is so easy, but your mind has to be there. The mind has to concentrate in order to get the chief flow because your mind has to keep imaging. Okay, now open your hands up and down. Your mind got to keep concentrate in where you're moving, then you can get chief flow. Otherwise, it won't be called chi gong, be the same as a regular exercise. Breathe out. We like the jogging. your left hand in front of you, very relaxed, and palm face to your right. All right, now right hand move down. Okay, right hand, two fingers go towards your palms, all others touch together, so you can get energy flow to your fingertips. All 
eye, you can close your eyes and try to move around so you can feel energy. Don't touch it so you can feel energy. The eye can feel it. We move around. Sometimes you're interested to put on the back of your palm and try to feel on the back. How many of you? So let's tell you one thing. What do we do if you are this side? Strong. Uh, this side is low energy. So energy flow. So from here, to sense the energy flow. So eventually, a lot of people, Qigong practice, after 5, 20, 30 years, they can use that hand, like that, that candle, put it in front of the candle, candle for this. Because I saw it. In China, I saw it. The guy called Liu Musen. They did it in front of the border. They didn't do it. They tried it years away. So the hands, if they can get chi out to make candle like that, then that is chi you can use to cure people, to remove any kind of obstacle. <coughs> That's called chi gong curing. You can use chi gong to remove the energy from the other people, or give your energy to a other guy to cure some sickness. So let's use chi gong to cure. So that was only some tip for exercise for you to train. And then go back, keep practicing, and read the book that you can get about. Okay, now sit back. All right. Now we have about <coughs> twenty minutes. We go to China now. Okay. Maybe. Is it okay, this thing? All right. Watch it. I turn. See the hands. It's very simple. I control this sound. Okay. If I go like that, there's a sound. That's two. It's, it's not too hard. You have to get it right. See the hands. I lock this. When I go this way, this and I lock here. When I lock here, this and open. That's right. I don't need power because you can use one finger, control one finger, control the whole body. The same thing, you know, when you use power, the same thing. See the hand? You lock here, the same thing. All right, so you can catch this right. Because the hands, you couldn't go longer. Couldn't go longer than that. Some people, some people can this one touch this one, that you couldn't control it. That's the reason you got this one. Those people, they can go here, they go this one, they got trouble. All right, you got two, you never lose. Okay, try again, okay, watch it. This hand, you turn, when you turn, keep away from that hand. So once you go here, that's why you got here. Okay, so this and lock, this and lock. You can go one finger or two fingers. The same thing for this hand. When you go this side, keep away from that hand. So this and go here, this and go here. The few fingers, the better. It's not say, okay, I get four, it's better. No, you get one finger. Because you need, what you need, you need only one. Then you control someone. Okay, you need only one. Okay, that's the first one, so I get it. So you get it right. Okay, fine, pardon. <laughs> that's the that you use it, the, you learn that you want to use it the right way. As I said, everything comes from <coughs> touch. Like you push hand with enemy, when you get the right chance, you try to grab it to get a chance, you got it. So fast, you turn, you got it in. All right. It's not that, okay, now hold me, let me do it. Nobody's going to be stupid like that. <laughs> so everything, all that you know, you apply by surprise on the, while you're pushing hand and while you're sparring. Like especially in pushing hand. So Tai Chi, China is a major part of Tai Chi application. Okay. All right, we go to the next one. Let me use <coughs> any. Don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> Try to use other tools because uh, Jeff's school probably already learned it. Okay. Try to get this one. Try to learn this one. It's very simple. I still control the joint. I control the sound. And you see, I don't use the power because I don't want the hurt the same. Because you understand, there's a hands, right? You have a bones like that. You have ligaments falling. 
The leg and outer ligament, the muscle. The muscle here is not too strong, not too much. Most of the ligaments. So when ligaments you bend it to wrong angle, the ligaments start to peel off. Okay. So when we control your partner, I don't want you to use too much power. Just enough pain, but it's not trying to make the, the joint hurt too much because that's not good for your partner. Okay. That's the reason I hold it. Otherwise, if there's an enemy, it's going down really fast because we get trouble. Watch. So you don't see I use power, I don't use power. I use only one finger and he got control. Try to get this one. Get this one. So when you got it, you see it's very simple. You turn. So this end, you push to this joint. At the same time, use this part to lock this joint. Okay, thank you. Okay, one more. See, for different people, try to feel. One more. I don't want to use power again. Yeah. Because otherwise, he keeps saying every time I use him, I get trouble. All right? You can see I don't, still don't use power. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, one more. Okay. Okay, so you see I do slow now. If you go like that, it won't work. It's not going to work like that. Alright? How so you see? The angle, try to get perpendicular angle. When you go like that, okay, then you got <laughs> <laughs> This one's still a lot of jibs in the way Okay, so, see your hand. I just turn. When I turn, I let this hand go. I catch only the last finger. Alright, it's very painful. Very, very painful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. one more. Anyone want to Oh, he likes pain. <laughs> okay, you go here. Man. <laughs> like that. If I find two fingers, it's not too good. I did one dog. That's how I did. Okay. A lot of times, go like that. You lock two fingers. If you find two fingers, not that bad one dog. Because you can control two or one. Okay. Eventually, one is the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this will be the last one. I find lots of things to catch it. Because uh, when I show you, it's only control one. But eventually, it's when you real fight, you don't control only one part of the body. Okay, so that means the one part of the body control. It's still have another one to control. Okay, for example. Like this one, you go in like that, right? So once you go in like that, this hand eventually is over here already. So when you go this hand like that, this hand go in. So you can, see that's two. So if I have this hand, it won't work. This hand has to work. Okay, that's usually control. The same thing, when you move up here, when you move up here, this hand is here already. See, so we got here. So you have two instead of one. Okay. But you know it's two, the same as this one. We go here, that's one, that's another, that's two. We work on fingers, they always have two instead of one. Okay. So you got to practice. And also for this thing, see, it's not a hand. A lot of use hands like that, it's not good. See, it's a place, a lot of things body. I just walk from this side. I set up the right position already. You still go here. And you don't have time. When the real things happen, the enemy can punch you the other hand. You turn, you really turn like that, it's going. Okay, so you don't really see. You got to keep practicing until you can get it really, really, really good. But uh, the same thing, every technique, there's uh, some counter attack, it's not that simple. For example, like this one, I try to lock my hands, see? <laughs> it can be fast, and I can be fast too. Okay, so watch it, that's very simple. When I go here, I escape already. I lock this hand. Then, 
<laughs> okay, so almost every technique has a counter attack. But one thing you understand, one thing. What is it? You miss that instant, you have control, then you get trouble. For example, if I go like that, already like that, then he got trouble already. He couldn't do anything. But before I got him there, he just rotated his hands. I got nothing. Eventually, I'm in bad position because he's saying, lock me already. So everything, there's a, an instant, that instant, you know, get fast. You got your enemy, you got it. But if you want to react, you react at that time. You don't react, he will control you. Okay. So that's a chin up practice, that's purely the same thing in the Taiji push hand. The pure, when you push in with someone, you find you're in a bad position, you react before you really control. Okay. That's the whole training about. Otherwise, it's not useful. You can tell the students, okay, I can show you. How good it is, how good I am, say, how good, but in the real fight, you never use it. You can never use it, that's not good. Okay, so let's finish today, and uh, thank you for your seminar. And uh, I think 5.30 is going to have a demonstration, so that'll be a good time for me to sit down and watch. <laughs> okay, and uh, for I'll just take over, okay, and thank you. Thank you. Another quick reminder for the ones who haven't given a donation uh, for Mount Zion's expenses down here. We have a red box over here. Uh, Jan, if you can take care of it over there. Uh,